Hi everyone, so welcome on this uh, new video about uh, browser fuzzing. So uh, today our main goal will be to generate this kind of file. So um, basically we are looking to fuzz the DOM part of the browser. And for that we're gonna do we're gonna use a tool named uh, Freedom. So um, at the end we will generate some files that will look, look like that, that will basically manipulate uh, and use the API to manipulate DOM uh, content. And uh, the main goal of course will be to find uh, bugs. So let me uh, as usual show you the um, readme for uh, the following part. So first of all, what is DOM? So just to be sure, DOM stands for Document Object Model. So uh, the main idea is you have like an API, uh, it look, it's basically a JavaScript API, uh, that will um, allow you to create and manipulate HTML content directly. So you have an example right there, where basically when this function will be, uh, will be called uh, when the document is loaded, uh, we're going to create a H1, um, so it's basically a HTML header, uh, and we're going to put some message uh, inside, and uh, that's pretty much all, and we're going to basically update the document body. So um, as you can see, just by using some JavaScript, we can directly modify the HTML content of the document. So uh, the target of today will be... Um, will be Chrome, but you, you can of course target Firefox. As usual, you have the classical uh, command line to download like the Firefox uh, address sanitizer artifact build. So nothing fancy like the last video we have done regarding uh, Frida. So I also invite you to take a look at this one. So for uh, Chrome, you have uh, multiple solutions. The lazy one is to go on this website and it will directly link you to the uh, latest version uh, of it. So if we are updating the stuff, as you can see, uh, updated. Uh, so it's today, uh, like, 10, yeah, like 10 minutes ago. So that's, that's nice. So that's the lazy one. You can also, of course, directly access to all the um, official uh, because basically Chrome is storing everything and all the um, uh, artifact builds that he ever created. So you can even um, like download like an old version of uh, Chrome uh, already built with uh, address sanitizer. So you can go inside like Linux um, release, for example, and you will get like a lot of uh, Linux release. Oh, I don't remember if uh, yeah, it's this one. So you will get all the stuff. You also have like Linux debug. Uh, with all the debug symbol and so on also some windows and mac release so as you can see it's uh, from like 2014 so it's it's a bit old in terms of size it was pretty small at the time uh, right now it's definitely not that uh, we are a more close uh, i mean 2015 it was okay still uh, but right now we are more close to like 2.7 3.5 uh, gigabyte for the for the last one i think um so you have uh, a bunch of, of release available. Okay, so regarding the tool, um, we're gonna we're gonna mention uh, we're gonna play with is Freedom. So it's this one, this tool. So it have been released like nine months ago. Uh, it's a dumb feather. You have a paper right there, a really good paper that will basically tell you a bit more about uh, what is inside, uh, how it works, what's the main um, advantages compared to like um, Domato or Dharma and so on. Uh, they actually found some bugs uh, with that, so that's uh, that's nice. But uh, as, I mean, especially if you want to understand a bit more about like which kind of uh, vulnerability and um, how it works uh, uh, exactly, it's particularly uh, useful. So I will let you uh, take a look at that. And uh, we will basically uh, use this tool with like the most simple version. So the main idea will be for us to generate some test case. So we're going to generate some HTML file locally. And then we're going to give them to uh, the, the target. So in that case, uh, Chrome uh, ASAD. So let's uh, let me show you. So for the installation, nothing really fancy. You basically just need to clone the repository, uh, go in the folder and do um, and, and call the target. So using like a main pipe. So let me show you how to generate some sample. We are basically inside the freedom repository right there. So 
side. And basically, this command line will do uh, main.py uh, dash i1. Um, so you don't care about that for the moment. It's like how many thread to generate the stuff. So the more you the more you want, the better will be to have a bigger number right there. Dash m generate. So that's the only mode available. Uh, and dash n and the number of files. So right now I'm going to generate like, I don't know, like 100 or maybe a bit less. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit too long. Let's generate like um, 30 file and uh, dash O outputs as the folder that I want. So as you can see, it's pretty uh, fast. And uh, at the end, we will get uh, a bunch of results. So indirectly inside this folder. So let me show you. It's not this output. It will be this um, freedom. Yeah, we should be there. Output output so that's the file we generate so as you can see we are generating a html file um, we also automatically generate some css um, so right there we have a bunch of stuff a bunch of stuff generated randomly um, and then we have a bunch of uh, try uh, catch uh, in order to basically manipulate the stuff the main reason we are always putting the uh, this the line of javascript inside try catch is basically because we um, maybe this um, line of code will fail and if it's the case it will trigger like a javascript exception and it will basically interrupt the rest of the of the file so it's really bad for us since uh, that means we're going to provide one file and um, if we are triggering just one issue with one line of code uh, we will basically interrupt and not process all the rest so it's going to be it's not really well optimized and uh, it's not really what we are looking for. So we are putting everything into try catch to be sure. Uh, we, If we are failing on this one, we're just going to go to another one and another one and another one. So there is a lot of uh, line of code, uh, as you can see. Um, we have like, um, I don't know, like 4,000 line of code almost. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty huge. There is a lot of stuff, a lot of form. It's not just building like the the, the DOM API. It's also uh, generating some, um, some body, some some HTML, some HTML, uh, just some DOM API. So that's really complete. It's just not some sub part of the DOM. It's really a bunch of like a combination of both CSS, HTML, and uh, JavaScript. So that's nice. Uh, so right now, uh, what we can do is actually uh, provide one of those samples to Chrome. So uh, let's, uh, I already uh, decompress the stuff. So inside the ASAN Linux release, um, Chrome, I have my Chrome instance. And let me provide, um, I don't know, like it was like freedom. Let's provide maybe this one. Freedom output and the name of the file was 160. In 64, 26, uh, 26, 73, this one. So let's provide this one. And um, as you can see, the file seems to be loaded. Some pop ups have been blocked and some stuff is happening. We are getting some error, some message right there. So um, at least we know that something is, is done. Um, and, and that's all. Okay. So the main issue uh, right there for us is basically if we are looking to provide all those files to um, to the target, um, we will just create some new tab again and again. And uh, at the end, we will just get too much tab and it will uh, take too much memory and so on. Because we are not aware when this file basically will finish. So that's, uh, that's problematic. So what we can uh, actually do is modify the input this file that have been generated we can basically happen some stuff at the end and usually what i'm doing is happening um, this tiny piece of code right there that will basically modify the content it will add some javascript at the end and this javascript uh, code will basically close the windows so once everything will be processed on my uh, my HTML file, basically. Totally at the end, it will uh, close the window. So um, that will be nice because that means uh, it would just 
gonna switch to a new one and again and again. Uh, if it's taking too much time, um, we will get some tabs that will be stuck, but that, that's okay for, for most of it, uh, it will be okay. So, um, so let's uh, give it a try to this one right now. So um, I can basically modify the file we mentioned previously, this one. Um, so let me do um, vim. Okay, and uh, I will put that at the end. It's gonna be long. Okay, here we go. So we are totally at the end, um, and uh, let's do um, just copy past this stuff, and we're gonna close it. So okay, so right now let's run again with uh, Chrome, and let's see what is happening. So as you can see, it's immediate. So that means all the JavaScript inside have been uh, processed. So that's nice, and. Uh, the only downside of something like that is basically that uh, maybe not all the files have been processed totally. So in, in one way, we are faster, but on the other way, uh, we are not processing all the files. So that's a, that's a trade-off. Um, it's, it's up to you. Maybe what you can actually do is basically one version without that and one uh, with it. Or we can also put some uh, directly some timeout uh, inside, meaning that um, we will wait for like maybe two or three seconds and then uh, close the windows. We can also do that uh, right there. That's possible. So um, let's put everything into one uh, file. So uh, I create this first .sh and basically this file will first generate some inputs. Then it will modify the input by adding this to snippet of code. So it will add the windows.close um, at the end. Then uh, we're gonna sleep uh, a bit. We're gonna run the further, uh, sorry, we're gonna um, run Chrome like uh, alone. We're gonna wait a bit and then we're gonna iterate over all the uh, output and uh, we will basically provide our new uh, file directly to, um, to Chrome uh, ASAP. And we are just sleeping a bit before, between each of them because basically, um, if you are not doing that, um, there is a chance that um, your tab will just finish uh, and uh, it will uh, close the stuff. And, and basically, we don't want to reopen Chrome uh, each time. So that's why we are creating the process alone. And then for that, uh, we are also looking for just processing a bit. Uh, in the previous cases, um, it, it closed automatically, uh, but um, in some other cases, the, sh the stuff will just wait and continue to do some processing. So we just want to be sure at least we are processing the stuff for two seconds, and then uh, we, we are moving on. We can even put three seconds if we want. We will just give a, a bit more time to the to the to the slower. Um, a tab, but it will also mean if your tab is um, processed less than in less than three seconds, you will basically just wait for something that uh, you are wasting your time. So it's a, it's a trade-off. Just choose what you want, and uh, you you will see. Um, if you are not putting that, it will just open all the all the tabs, and uh, it's gonna be messy for your uh, for your process for your Chrome process to 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 deal with that. So let's run it. Um, first of all, it will uh, create a bunch of input um, output on the output folder. So um, it's there is no output folder. So there is one. Let's remove this one. Output. Okay, and let's run. .sh. So it will generate the file, then it is modifying all the files, so adding the stuff at the end, and then it will try to process everything. So it's start to work. There is some stuff and some message uh, that we are getting. So there is definitely something that is happening, some error in the sandbox. Um, okay, so it's just moving on. As you can see, this tab seems to be a bit stuck, but it's it's processed again and again, and we are getting the focus over this tab um, each time 
we are uh, basically finishing a new time and going back to this one. So that's also the good part with having like the um, windows closed at the end. Maybe we are a bit quick on some other, but we are getting back the, the focus on um, on some previous uh, tabs. Um, okay, let's run that again and see uh, what we what we are getting. Um, I will maybe create like yeah, I will create another tab. So let me close this one. So we have generated again some uh, new input, and as you can see, we are getting some some crashes, at least some error from address sanitizer. So that's nice. That means it's it's working well. Uh, we were getting some uh, expected uh, stuff. So in case of this one, it's not really uh, important. We uh, we will see that we can basically ignore this kind of error. But what is uh, interesting for us is that we are actually detecting and triggering. Uh, something interesting so is the only uh, case we have for the moment yeah so that's basically it uh, as you can see it's not really complicated ideally you want to do that for like 35 or something um, and uh, just I mean not just for 35 but basically you want to do that for like thousand of files and just process them and let the stuff running so there is a bunch of um, optimization and the idea to improve this tiny script that's really something really basic i'm giving you for the moment um, of course you can uh, also uh, combine that with like in process fuzzing and you can for example directly provide those content those strings directly inside dom parser parse from string that is a, a javascript um, uh, api you can also um, give a try to other uh, grammar based further like this one like domaito uh, like dharma that are the most famous one you can try to automatically detect uh, crashes and as asan message like the one we uh, we trigger uh, we detect that manually but uh, it will be even better if you can detect that automatically and save the given file um, i already triggered a uh, one uh, bug like this one previously so let me show you uh, I ASAN alloc size uh, HTML exceed this one. So if I'm running this one again, as you can see, I'm trigger I'm getting like my tab that is uh, basically completely stopped. And um, if we are taking a look, we can see request allocation size and so on. So we can ignore this kind of message by using this uh, this um, environment um, option like. ASAN option allocator may return null. So if we are using this uh, stuff right there, we can basically say, okay, uh, ignore this kind of message um, and uh, we will just get some warning, but that's all. We will not get any uh, ASAN uh, error. So that will be, uh, that will be okay. Uh, and we can filter those kind of uh, message. So that's all for today um, so let me know if you have uh, any question um, also please um, you can directly get access to the script and what i uh, mentioned uh, previously directly on the on this introduction to browser fuzzing uh, so directly on my uh, platform um, and um, yeah please give me feedback uh, give me also some idea uh, if you have specific tool you want me to discuss uh, i can perfectly uh, give it a try actually this one was like one suggestion uh, one suggestion of one of you so uh, that's that's good that's good and uh, for the next video i will uh, not um, still focus on browser fuzzing but i will also discuss some other stuff maybe some uh, some linux kernel and stuff like that uh, a lot of you uh, mentioned that so uh, it's going to be maybe the, the other videos. So uh, I hope you appreciate it and please subscribe and uh, like and uh, let me know uh, what you would like to see next. Bye.